Hello, friends and family from around the world. This is Mike with Daily Events Worldwide, and we are on September 27th, 2022. Welcome to another surviving day on the planet. Welcome to the Daily Do, giving you your space weather update, as well as earthquakes, volcanoes, and a look at world weather. Having a look here at the last 48 hours of imagery in our sun, 304 angstroms. Still a couple minor sunspots, earth-facing, as well, coronal holes to, to deal with. And last night, we got hit by something, and I think it might have been this large plasma filament that took off from the left-hand side there. We were definitely penetrated by a plasma stream, brought things up to a geomagnetic storm, G3. Having a look here, last 48 hours incoming and outgoing. No new major solar flares to talk about. We remain in sea range. Having a look here at multi-spectrum, showing the last 48 hours of events. Pretty active regions there. And as well, another one cresting in top left-hand side. Solar cycle 25. Definitely ramping up. Having a look here, 193 angstroms. Showing the darkened coronal hole regions. Pretty complex area there in the equatorial region of our sun. So two coronal holes getting ready for an earth facing position. ISWA Space Prediction Spiral showing that CME taking off yesterday towards BEPI Satellite and as well the Parker Solar Probe. It could enhance our space weather that we are expecting from the coronal hole wind stream. As you can see here, we are in a G3 geomagnetic storm. Surface charging may occur. Solar X-ray flux remains in C range. Saw about four C-class solar flares since yesterday's update. And as you can see, geomagnetic activity heightened up to KP6. Real-time solar wind was sitting at about 480 kilometers per second after being up to about 537 kilometers per second. And most notable here, as things changed, the density bunch is up to 64. Wow. Now let's see how our magnetosphere held out. This is the last six hours of imagery showing the solar winds hitting our planet. Schumann resonance for today is a power of 20. A nice low power yet again. Heightened telemetry towards the last hour. Quality of 8.1 and a power of 7. Amplitude of 20. Now let's get to earthquakes past 24 hours. As you look across the map right now, it looks quiet. And it is quiet, except for the northern mid-Atlantic. Having a look around the world, you can see where most of the action has been. The Rick Janes Ridge, 4.9, and yesterday it was a 5.2. And then it just kept going. Sorry, 5.3. And we've seen about 13 aftershocks through the region. So what's going on there? Having a look here at North American Plate. Bodfish, California, 3.7. Largest through the United States. As well, 2.9 there. Notable Elmo, Montana. Notable 2.8 there in Arkansas. And a lot of these earthquakes were reported yesterday. Most of the activity has been through the Rick James Ridge. Deepest earthquakes past 24 hours here. Hahaifo, Tonga, 4.5, 190 kilometer depth as well. 4.8 here in Russia. Now have a quick look here at the European Earthquake Data Center. Showing the past 24 hours of earthquakes. Not much different than USGS, but they do report more of the European earthquakes. Having a look here at the Rec Janes Ridge where this earthquake swarm is occurring. 
showing about 20 earthquakes here, EMSC. That's right in the corner of that plate, mid-Atlantic plate. Heads up, stay aware and prepared, and stay tuned to daily events worldwide. Now let's have a look at Hurricane Ian as it is now ramping up into a Category 4, getting ready to leave Havana as that eye retained its strength and velocity right across Cuba. Tons of moisture being thrown towards Florida right now. And we have six tropical depressions. Two of them are major hurricanes. We've got, of course, Tropical Storm Ian, Hurricane Ian, going to be a Category 4, possible Category 3 when it makes landfall. So stay safe, stay aware, prepared. Look here at Typhoon Noru, who is making landfall the same category, Category 4, parts of northeastern Thailand. So definitely thoughts and prayers going out to those affected. Having a look here at the West Pacific, as there is a ton of moisture falling right now. Lots of moisture being picked up with Typhoon Noru and thrown right across Southeast Asia. Now let's get to the Pacific Disaster Center, showing the most recent satellite imagery and reporting the most recent volcanoes getting updated. Sabancaya in Peru, as well as Popocatépetl in Mexico. Carrying on here, Nevada Steru is Colombia, Ibu, Indonesia, Swiss and Najima in Japan. A couple tornado warnings going out. Key West, Florida, and as well, Miami, Florida. We've got a new volcano that has awakened as well in Russia, Alade. Volcano Alade is awake on the Kamchatka island of Kamchatka. Well, it's not really an island, but eastern Russia. Also got Ebico in Russia, Sangay in Ecuador, Fuego in Guatemala, Semeru, Indonesia, Era in Japan. So that's about eight volcanoes getting updated today. Having a look at satellite imagery, we do have three active tropical storms course Hurricane Ian in the Atlantic, the Gulf of Mexico. We've also got Typhoon Noru making landfall Thailand tonight, Category 4. We've also got another one just northeast of that. Tropical Storm Kulap has formed not expected to make landfall. We've also got Tropical Cyclone Ashley, South Indian Ocean, heading westward. And that's a look at satellite imagery around the world. Now let's get to our world weather forecast. Overlooking Ontario, still widespread and scattered showers. Massive low pressure system over top of us right now. And it will eventually scoot away by tomorrow. then observing here forecast models for Hurricane Ian as it is heading into the Florida Panhandle tonight and into tomorrow and then by Friday making making it across the Florida Panhandle and up into the Carolina states and it does not look like it's going to reach northern parts of Ontario other than that Low pressure system developing off the coast of Washington and BC. Watch for that moisture to move in, mostly southeastward. Low developing over Denver. The long range forecast. Also a lot of moisture heading into northern BC and Alaska. Overlooking the Atlantic. No other major tropical storms developing in the long range here.
forecast models for Typhoon Noru as it is making landfall tonight. Widespread scattered thunderstorms and heavy rainfall, torrential downpours. And watch for all that moisture to flood into Indonesia as well, mixed with the tropical system in South Indian Ocean, overlooking Australia. Moisture moving away parts of Eastern Australia. And then by Friday, watch for another low to come in through central parts and scoot right across Australia. And then a mixed bag of precipitation and strong winds, Southeastern Australia, long range forecast. Also observing here, a pretty large system heading through the East Pacific Ocean. Long range forecast will make landfall BC very strong low. And also watch for these uh, snow forecast models from this low pressure system. That is in the long range snow for Manitoba, Northern Ontario. Quick look at temperatures. Welcome to autumn. Thanks everybody for watching today. Much love. Stay aware, prepared, stay young and have fun and get your daily due. And again, thanks for all of your memberships. Big shout out to all of you right here. Much love. Stay aware and prepared. Stay young and have fun and get your daily due. Bye-bye now. If you enjoyed today's video, please hit that like button, subscribe, share with your friends and family from across the world.